Cook, Pump Fake, and the Jumper! Jake, in the lane, hop step, and one! You're watching a production of the SUNYAC Men's Basketball Championship Tournament on WTOP 10. Well, everybody, it was a long road to get here, but we finally made it to the Sudiac Championship between the Oswego Lakers and the two-seeded Brockport Golden Eagles. I am Luke Rosenthal. Alongside me is Brian Burroughs, <laughs> excuse me, and Thomas Tallarino. And guys, it, like I said, it's been a long road to get here. Some would say the, these two teams were on a collision course to get here. What are your opening thoughts on this evening? This is going to be a great game. The top two teams in the SUNYAC in the regular season are meeting in the championship game. They had two great bouts earlier this season and they're the two teams destined to be here. Two great well-coached teams on a collision course. I don't know about you guys but after watching that hype video I'm ecstatic oh, for this yeah. game right yeah. now. No, no doubt about that. And like I said, this two t these two teams here, some would say we're meant to get here. The, Of course, the number one seed Oswego Lakers and the number two seed Brockport Golden Eagles. But guys, this championship matchup here between two really solid teams in the Sudiac. Yeah, Brockport has four all-conference players. They work really well together. They pass the ball. They defend everybody on the court at all times. It's going to be really hard for the Lakers to get through Brockport. And Oswego, I mean, they do really do the same thing. Excellent defense, though it has been a little suspect the last couple of games. Uh, I'm excited to just see everything that happens. Yeah, you talk about that Brockport defense. They held the Cortland team 3 of 30 from 3 yesterday. That's 10%. I don't know about you guys. That is some great numbers for college right. basketball. And Oswego, on the other hand, you talk about how, uh, you know, the defense is a little bit suspect, but they are known for their defense. Yeah. You know, they create the stops, they create the turnovers, they run in transition, and they get easy buckets. That's what they're known for. Yeah, both teams sort of struggled in their own different ways last night. But we're going to take a look at the championship bracket in the SUNYAC because, like I said, it's been a long time getting here, and these two teams were on a collision course, you see. New Paltz being sort of beat down by Oswego towards the end of that game. Oswego comes up with a 73-68 to win. Brockport had their way with Cortland. And even before that, Cortland beating Geneseo 93-55 and Oneonta losing to New Paltz by quite a staggering mar margin, Brian. Yeah, you look at the two playing games, and it was two almost blowouts. Cortland, a f almost 40-point victory. And then New Paltz looking at over 20 points. And then you come to, to last night's games, and they were close. They were hard-fought games on both from all four teams. Yeah, uh, I just want to highlight New Paltz right there. 72 to 48. They were on upset watch again in the next or last round last night. They looked like they were going to walk away with a win against Oswego. There were times where Ryland Blondo, we talked about him all oh, yeah. last night. He was phenomenal all around the court. You know, he's making defensive plays, he was making offensive buckets. And then you saw Brockport, they were shut down in the second half. The first half, it was really slow, very methodical. Both teams couldn't find their shot. Brockport came out in the second half, they ran in transition, they created chaos, they created the turnovers, and Jeed Wallace, he put the team on his back. Yeah, absolutely, and you talk about Rylan Blondo in that game, just everywhere on the court doing everything for that New Paltz team. Couldn't quite get it done against Oswego. But in that win afterwards, we sat down with Coach Leone. He talked about how he thought Oswego played that evening. I think our guys deserve a lot of credit. Um, we, we were outplayed, okay? That's not, it's not an opinion, all right? That, that we were outplayed. Um, and we didn't. We hardly executed anything we worked on all week. So that, that was just a little discouraging. But we're moving on. And, guys, Coach Leone couldn't be too happy with the way they played last night. But they ended up getting the win. He's excited to be here. Can't look back. But that's going to do it for right now. When we come back from break, we're going to talk a little bit more about those two games that happened last night. It's the SUNYAC Championship right here on WTOP 10. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10.
Roll it. Jill told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> And welcome back inside the Al Roker studio right here on the broadcast for WTOP TED. I am Luke Rosenthal alongside Brian Burrows and Tali, Tommy Tallarino. And guys, we just saw that Coach Leon shot just before the break. So what are you guys' thoughts on it? Yeah, obviously Coach not very happy with that game. No. But later in the press conference, he did attribute the win to his veteran players. Team, all these guys have experience in the playoffs, and he's, he was – that was really the reason he said they won that game. Yeah, and you know, it's the old saying, good teams win games, but great teams find a way to win. And they found a way to win right there. It looked like their back was against the wall, and they walk away with a victory. Yeah, started to get hot down the stretch. But we're going to take a look at the team that they're playing tonight. Those Brockport Golden Eagles had their way with Cortland last night, and it was quite the game, Brian. We take a look at the full screen right here. Yeah. It, for, Bro for Brockport, Jihadi Wallace took over in the second half. He had 19 points in the game, and a majority of them were in the second half. Austin Grunder, one of the best players in the SUNYAC for Cortland, tried to put the team on his back late in that one, but it just wasn't enough. As Tommy mentioned earlier, three from 30 from three, it's not going to do it for a victory, and they really just couldn't get anything going in that one. Yeah, you see Cortland right there. They shot 27% from the field. That's because they shot 37% in the second half. In that first half, they shot under 20%. One thing I do want to highlight from this Brockport team, 16 points off turnovers, 9 second chance buckets. That's huge right there. That shows commitment and a really high motor team right there. Uh, Mackie Beckett as well, 14 points, 5 of 15 from the field, 2 of 5 from 3. He was kind of like the sidekick out there next to Jahidi Wallace. You know, he would had 19, 6 of 13 from the field. Brockport did what they needed to do in the second half. They made the adjustments, and they walked away with a win. Absolutely did what they needed to do. Now let's take a look at what Oswego did last night. And guys, not many people expected it to be this close. They came away with a 73-68 victory, Brian. Yeah, Oswego had a really tough night shooting from the field. And in total, 37%, but it was only 30% in the first half, which led to a 29-27 scoring at the half. These teams were inseparable the entire game. I think the big difference was Oswego on the offensive boards absolutely dominated. I think the big thing, you know, the turnovers right there. New Paul 16, uh, Oswego 11, and Oswego took advantage of those. They had 17 points off the turnovers. The first half, it was looking really bleak for this team. They didn't know who was going to try and get those buckets when they need it. In the second half, it turned out to be the veteran, Devin Green. You know, 5 of 9 from 3, most of those coming in the second half. 17 points on the night. Jeremiah Sparks also had a good game. It looked like at times, you know, he was struggling, had a couple turnovers, but he found his groove and was able to provide some positives on the offense. Cardio Bowman as well, he, you know, he did have some foul trouble, but he was efficient on the night, and those guys stepped up for Oswego, and they found a way to win. Absolutely found a way to win. And speaking of Cartier Bowman, we talked to him at the press conference after the game last night, and he talked about his, just his pure excitement to be here in the championship. It was great. We had the whole Oswego come out, support us, and hopefully tomorrow it's the same way. It was a lot of energy here. The crowd was involved. It was just, it was a very great experience for my first time being here. 
Now, this Oswego team has quite the history with this Brockport team. They split over the season, and Brockport's been one of the few teams to give this Oswego team some trouble as we look into some of that history just this season. And, Brian, last time out, Brockport got the better of Oswego. Yeah, earlier this season, in Max Zeal, the Lakers took their only home loss of the season. You see that 58-47 scoreline. It was a really, really rough night from the field for Oswego. Kind of led by Jeremiah Sparks' 2-for-20. You can't repeat that tonight. They did make up for it in the second game, 79-73, and that's where they clinched the regular season title on Brockport's home court. Yeah, you talk about that first game. Brockport walked away with a win. They shot 12% from three, 37% from the field. Those are numbers where it's like, wow, you can't believe that they won a game like that. But, you know, Oswego, they couldn't get anything going. They only shot 25% from the field, 18% from three. Talk about Sparks. He really hasn't been able to get things going in both of these games, so I'm interested to see how he performs tonight. And then the second game, it was back and forth. You know, they battled the whole way. Oswego, they shot 42% from the field and then 37.5% from three. Those are the numbers you want to see if you want to walk away with a win, you know, they want to be around a little bit under 40 from three, around 50% from field goal percentage as a whole. That's really great in college basketball. Yeah, and that's what they've been accustomed to really this entire season. And seeing production from not just one player, but a bunch of players has been the key to victory for this Oswego team so far this season. But we're going to throw it to a quick break, but don't go anywhere because on the other side, we take our first look inside Max Seal Gym with Zach Malibud and Brian DeMora. It's the Sudiac Championship right here on WTOP 10. you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. We're shine on that. that Look that at the boy. bling. Look at the, do we got a diamond tester on? Yeah, that's getting bad. Yeah. Yep. 10 out of 10 guys. recommend on you. Yeah. I'm buzz. I spend too much time on my phone. What? I should take your phone away. No, no, no. I'll call for a ride. Hey, why does my face look like that? <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with these new face filters. Okay, you know what? what? Yep, that's mine. I'm gonna need that back. No. Kevin! Thank you, Luke. Welcome, everybody, inside Max Seal Gymnasium. Zach Malaman alongside Brian DeMuro. SUNYAC Championship between the Brockport Golden Eagles and the Oswego State Lakers. Should be an unbelievable matchup. Let's get right into it as we're going to look at a couple of different players from both teams, starting off with Brockport. Jahadi Wallace, a big game yesterday against Cortland. Looking for another one today. Yeah, Jahadi Wallace is one of those guys that can fill up the stat sheet for Brockport. He averages 13 points per game on the season, but last night he had 19 and 10 to lead his team against Cortland and against Oswego this year. He's been just around 18 points per game. He also gets about 10 rebounds a game against Oswego. So here's a guy you, that Oswego really needs to look to focus in on and stop him early because he can fill it up quickly. And for the Lakers, we're going to look at Cartier Bowman. Had a huge game against Brockport a couple of weeks ago. It's going to have a big impact down low today. 
Yeah, Bowman's another one of those guys. Six foot six, junior from Trenton, New Jersey. He's dropped 17 points per game, 17 points along with 11 rebounds against uh, Brockport last time they played last week in Oswego's win. You know, Cartier Bowman's one of those guys who can, again, really stick this team together, get it going if someone's struggling. Like last night, you know, it took a little bit for J Jeremiah Sparks to get going. He was that guy who was able to fill in, get some good minutes. He plays nearly every minute of the game. So he's one of those glue guys for this team, and he can score, he can assist, he can rebound. He does it all. He's also a great free throw shooter. So Cartier Bowman, another guy that Oswego wants to make sure he gets involved and stays locked in for the duration of this game. Both those guys looking for an impact for both teams as Bowman was really impactful in the last couple of games, has started almost every game for the Lakers this season. The transfer from St. Rose coming in, having a huge impact. We're going to look at both these teams now and some numbers for both teams as these teams, number one and two in the SUNYAC, they're basically inseparable. Very close games in the first two outings. Should be a close one today as well. Yeah, you guys see it here. The field goal percentages are almost identical. Oswego does shoot it better from three, which could be a point of emphasis here for Brockport trying to limit Oswego's three-point opportunities. And the points off turnovers are nearly even. These teams, like you said, Zach, are super, super close. They're one and two. One game separated them in the regular season. The season series was split 1-1. So this game really could go either way. It's going to be a fun one. And the Lakers have struggled from three-point range recently. And Brockport is not a three-point shooting team. That could be a story for the Lakers as three-point shooting could be the difference in this one. Absolutely. You saw it last night. Brockport struggled a little bit from three. Oswego was right around their season average. So, yeah, three-point shooting is going to be a point of emphasis for both those teams offensively and defensively. You know, last night against Cortland, Brockport held them to one of 26 from three. That is something that's unbelievable. you got to give credit to their defense. And if they can do that against Oswego tonight, they'll give themselves a chance to win. But at the same time, Oswego needs to step up and continue to shoot the way they've been shooting, just around 40% for the season. So this could be huge if they can shoot the three ball well tonight. And field goal percentage, the Lakers really struggle. 37% from the field against New Paltz. The first time these two teams met, it was abysmal shooting from the Lakers, and Brockport came out on top by 11. Lakers need to shoot the ball well if they want to come out with a win. Absolutely. You know, getting going early is, I think, a, a big point of emphasis for the Lakers, especially Jeremiah Sparks. You know, he's their guy, one of the top players in the conference. You want to get him going early. Last night it took a little bit for him to get going, but once he did, it turned the whole game around in the second half. You want to really make sure that he gets going early, get his points, get him touches early on to get him to a rhythm so that he can try and fill up the scoreboard again. And let's talk about these two legendary coaches. Greg Dunn coming in with an unbelievable record in both overall games as well as the SUNYAC. Three SUNYAC titles for him and Coach Jason Leone for the Lakers. Five SUNYAC titles and an unbelievable win percentage starting with Greg Dunn. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Greg Dunn, 15th year here coaching this Brockport team. His win percentage is 66%. He's got three SUNYAC championships, and this guy just knows how to win. As you said, Zach, both these coaches are winners. They've been around a long time. They know how to win. He, in 14 of his 15 seasons now, he's made this game. So he knows exactly what he needs to do to coach well, and he has coached this Brockport team to the second seed in the conference. And now over to Jason Leone. He's been with the team for 12 years, as you guys can see on the screen. He has a 74 win percentage. He has got five SUNYAC championships. And if his team can pull away with this victory tonight, they will have gone back-to-back -back in the SUNYAC conference for the first time in program history. So, Zach, these two coaches, they know how to coach good. They know how to treat their, uh, you know, train their players well to get to this game. And they're here on the big dance again. And Greg Dunn actually has a championship win in Mag Zeal back in 2007-2008. Rockport struggled in conference that season, but... Oswego lost to Brockport. That was before Coach Jason Leone got there. But the experience of winning in Mag Zeal, Greg Dunn definitely has it. Absolutely. And Dunn, he's really coached this team exceptionally well this season. As you mentioned, one of the only teams to really give Oswego some trouble this year. They did hand them their only home loss back earlier in the season. So this is, who knows, you know, if there was any team that could beat Oswego, it might be this Brockport team. And that's a tribute to how well Greg Dunn has done this season. And Jamal Achilles spoke yesterday in the press conference. We'll hear what he had to say about today's game. Uh, we just know it's going to be a real physical game. They're going to come try. Um, they're going to come right at us from the gate. 
So we just have to be ready, play defense. Defense is the most important thing right now. So if we could gather some stops and then put the ball in the rim, I think we should win the game. And Jamal Achille, we already talked about Cartier Bowman. Jamal Achille is also going to have a huge presence down low against this Brockport side. Yeah, he's another one of those guys for Oswego where he can really fill up the stat sheet in a number of ways. If it's not scoring, he's on the glass or it's hustle plays. And they're going to need that tonight. The rebounding game is going to be huge. These are teams that are, both these teams are right around the same rebound per game average, just around 38, 40 rebounds per game. And that was the tail of the game in their last matchup. Um, Oswego did win the rebound battle. Actually, they actually lost it just by one. But in the game that Brockport did come out on top, Brockport has six more rebounds. So the rebounding game is going to be huge. And Achilles is really important on that end and really on both ends of the floor, offensive and defensive rebounds for this Lakers squad. So we're going to send it to a quick break, and then Luke and the guys in the studio will get things ready as we get set for tip-off. Zach Malm with Ryan DeMuro, the SUNYAC Championship right here on WTOP Tech. Welcome back to Major Discussions. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hey there, I'm Al Roker, class of 76. Yes, way back in 76. Back when the earth was cooling. You're watching <laughs> WTOP. As we take one look Last look at the Maxwell Gymnasium before heading to tip-off. We're going to bring it back to the Al Roker studio. I'm Luke Rosenthal alongside Brian Burrows and Tommy Tallarino. And guys, it's time to talk about those P's. That's picks and players to watch. Let's talk about some of those studs that we're going to be seeing on the court today. Brian, who are you looking out for on Brockport? All right, my player to watch on Brockport is Makai Beckett. He has played really well against us this year, 33 points. 10 rebounds in his two games. He is a, the leading scorer for this Brockport team at 16.9 points per game, five rebounds a game, and is very efficient from the field, 43%. Not the best three-point shooter, but he moves around the court really, really well. He's, as you mentioned earlier, kind of the sidekick to Jihadi Wallace, despite being the team's leading scorer, but we can't overlook his impact. Yeah, I think that's a great pick. I'm going with the 0027 of last game from <laughs> when these two teams faced off. Tony Arnold, I mean, he had 27 points in a losing effort, but he shot the lights out. 11 of 20 from the field, five rebounds, three assists, four steals. There wasn't a thing this man wasn't doing in that game. I think he's part of the big reason why it was only a six-point loss and was in their favor at times in that game. I think uh, he's going to step up. You know, he kind of had a quiet night. Uh, last night, 14 points, 5 of 13. Not the best, but he was able to help out on the defensive end, create some chaos. And then for Oswego, I got the guy we've been talking about almost all day, Cartier Bowman. Bowman, you know, he's one of those guys where you can always look out for on the court. He's very solid. He does what he needs to do. 
Very efficient last night, 13 points, four of five from the field, five of six from free throw line, seven rebounds. He got in a little bit of foul trouble. That's all right, because he was able to stay in the game and help out. One block, three steals. There's nothing this guy can't do on the court for the Lakers. Uh, I love Cartier Bowman, but for me, it's going to be Joey Roback. He is going to come off the bench, and he needs to be the spark plug. Number three this season in the Suniac in three-point percentage, and he is a guy that when he's hot, he's draining threes. A couple games this season where he just comes off the bench, hits two, three threes in a row, and he can be that guy that will give the Lakers life. If they're struggling to come out the gate, which would be a big problem, uh, Joey Roback, and also got to throw in Devin Green there. If they're hitting threes, this team is going to go places. Yeah, if they're hitting threes, it might be hard for Brockport to catch up in this one. But it's all about who's winning here tonight and those game picks. Brian, who you got in this one? All right, so I'm going to start off a little sour note here. Um, 64-62 Brockport. Brockport wow. played really well last night versus Cortland. They've played the Lakers tough all season. They already won once in Max Zeal. And I think they're going to do it again. They're going to keep it close. The Lakers are going to keep it close, but I think it's going to come down to the end. It might come down to free throws, but Brockport's going to hold the lead at the end. Wow, Brian, you're spoiling Gold Rush weekend. Come on, we got here on pom the poms. Come on. We need some joy. <laughs> I'm going with the Oswego Lakers in this one. I think, you know, this is going to be a really tough game. I think you're going to see a lot of defense played in this game. You're going to see a lot of back and forth. There's going to be times where the momentum's going to shift for Brockport. There's going to be times where momentum's going to shift for Oswego. But I think Oswego, they have a lot of veteran leadership on this team with Sparks and Green. You know, Bowman, he is a transfer, but he knows how to play as a veteran. I think you're going to see him step up and walk away with a win here. So I guess I have to split the difference, and I guess I'm going to end it on a sour note as well. Wow. First time ever picking an away team on these broadcasts. I'm going with Brockport 72-65. I think last night's game might lull over a little bit into this championship game here. Oswego just not going to get it done here tonight. But that's wow. going to do it for us here in the Owl Roker studio. We're going to send it to a quick break before we get to tip off of the PDX championship. It's Oswego versus Brockport right here on WTOP10. Good job, boys. Double break hey guys, it's me, or? Isabella I, Gomez, I filling in for Smokey Bear no because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear? Podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. When I was in foster care, hello everyone, welcome back on in inside Max Seal Gymnasium as we present to you the Sudiac Championships on WTOP 10. Zach Malamud alongside Brian DeMuro as these two Suniac powerhouses, the SUNY Brockport Golden Eagles and the Oswego State Lakers meet up in the championship game. Absolutely, Zach. This gym is ready to explode. We got fans from both sides here, number one and number two in the conference. It should be a heck of a game. As these two teams know each other very well, as well as these two coaches have met a couple of times in these big games, a couple of them in Zeal, a couple of them in Brockport, as both these teams won their semifinal matchup 
Lakers a little bit closer than Brockport's win against Cortland. Yeah, you know, I think both teams wish they could have played a little bit better yesterday. They did struggle a little bit. Um, Oswego definitely took a little while to get going before finally pulling away late against New Paltz. And for Brockport, they also had a pretty close game. They were in command most of the game, though. I think that Brockport played very great defense yesterday, holding Cortland to very low three-point percentage. And I think that's one of the keys of the game for Brockport tonight, just really forcing their turnovers the way that their defense did yesterday and trying to limit the three-point attempts for the Lakers. As the Golden Eagles are going to be in all green today, they're going to be moving from right to left in the first half. Lakers in all white, moving from left to right. We're going to get set for tip-off. It's going to be Sparks. It's going to be Bowman, actually, and David Grady the third. His teams met one week ago, a six-point Oswego win in Brockport. Bowman and Grady, we are off in the SUNYAC Championship. Brockport start with possession. Colby Jordan brings it up. Arnold, down low to Jahadi Wallace, double teamed by the Lakers. Good pass to Colby that's Jordan. Pass. Yeah, that's a great pass inside by Grady to Jordan. That's what they did all yesterday, too, when doubles came. They moved the ball really well offensively. Lakers have it with Achilles. Green to Bowman. Bowman on the inside, looks for Achille and turns it over. Good start for Brockport. And that's what we mentioned in the pregame. Brockport's defense was suffocating for Cortland last night. They're trying to replicate that again today and or for a turnover in the first possession. Jordan brings it up. Last time Brockport were in this gym, they grabbed a 58 to 47 win. Wallace has it tipped away by Achille, but he was out of bounds. Yeah, another double team comes. So you see early on here, Oswego State is double teaming the post every single time they get it inside to Wallace or to Grady. So something to note early on. It's Beckett, baseline out of bounds, gets it to Jordan and over to Arnold. Arnold stepped back from the wing and can't hit it. Sparks goes quickly. What a Nobody move. guards him, and Sparks easy to the rim. Beautiful in-and-out move by Jeremiah Sparks. That's their guy. Got to get him going early. Sparks averaging 16.5 points per game this season. Arnold to Beckett. 15 on the shot clock. Beckett can't get it to Wallace, and Green took it away. He's fouled. Another great defensive possession there by Oswego, forcing the turnover. Now they get the ball right back. Lakers on their home floor. How big can this crowd have an impact? Oh, absolutely, Zach. You know, basketball is such a game where the fans can really dictate it. They're right there. They're courtside. They're able to get loud and get their team to rally behind them. And it's a packed gym. It's great to see for this Lakers squad. Anderson finds a killie. Thought about the three. Now posts up down low with Grady on him. Achille can't hit his layup. Bowman tried for the offensive rebound, but Wallace gets it, stays in bounds. Brockport possession. Colby Jordan with it. Finds David Grady the third. And Jordan had it taken away. Sparks moves quickly. Slowed down. It's going to body up Jordan and makes the layup. That's a beautiful move from Jeremiah Sparks going to the drop step, getting to his spot and put it up with the left hand. Four quick points for Jeremiah Sparks. 17.35 to go in the first half. Tony Arnold with Anderson on him. Arnold finds Jordan. Ten on the shot clock. He'll pull up from the free throw line. Too much room for Colby Jordan. Yeah, a bit of a miscommunication there defensively. Can't happen. He's going to knock that down every time. Green will set things up for the Lakers. Nodded at four at Max Zeal. Sparks. 13 on the shot clock. Anderson from the wing. What a jumper from Aki Anderson. That's a tough shot, Zach. Hand in his face. Rise, elevate from about the seven, eight foot. Puts it in. 
Anderson struggled with only three points last night. Gets on the board early in this one. Beckett tries a three, and it's no good. As Achille hit it off the hands of Grady. And Oswego will take possession, 16-37 to go. And that's a guy that you can't let get going. Makai Beckett, he leads their team in scoring, averaging just about 17 points per game. Last night, he only had 14, but he can fill it up quickly. Anderson brings it up. Zach Mallon with Brian DeMuro on WTOP 10, the Suniac Championship game. Sparks finds Achille. He'll try a three. It doesn't go for the Lakers. Wallace with the rebound. He'll bring it up with Green on him. Wallace into the lane and can't hit his layup. Yeah. Bowman with the rebound. Point blank look from Wallace. Just wasn't able to finish. Sparks down to Achille in the post. Looking for options. Finds Anderson. And the jumper rattles in. Soft touch for Anderson. Lakers out to an 8-4 lead. 15-50 to go in the first half. Colby Jordan gets it to Tony Arnold. Arnold on the baseline. Nice Great pass. pass to Jordan, but he can't hit the layup. Anderson will go quickly for us. We go. Another and turnover. Too easy for David Grady. As Anderson tried the no-look pass down low. Arnold. Double teamed, and the Lakers get another turnover. Achille to Green. Floater in the lane, and he knocks it down. Timeout, Brockport, 15.03 to go. It is 10-4, Oswego. Yeah, and Green's a guy, another one who lit it up last night. He had five three-pointers. He really was feeling himself last night. you got to continue to feed those hot hands, especially in the playoffs, Zach. You know how it is in playoffs and in big games. When you got somebody who's hot, who's feeling it, you got to keep feeding them. That's what they're doing early, getting Sparks involved and Green. And Oswego, so far, looking pretty good, especially on the defensive end as well. Brockport, Brockport two for six to start this one. It's also three turnovers. Oswego is dominating off turnovers, four to nothing so far to start this one. Absolutely. You see they're trapping a lot of actions off the pick and roll, and also when they're trying to get the entry pass into the post, Oswego has had a guy on the back end coming for the double team every single time, trying to force Brockport into uncomfortable situations, and they force some bad passes, they force some turnovers, and that's what's had them out to the early lead so far. Lakers also winning the rebound battle, four to two. That's a big story early with big bodies down low for Brockport. Yeah, that's definitely a point of emphasis for both these teams. Whichever team wins the rebound battle has a very good chance of winning this game. They match up pretty decently with size. This is the one team that actually might be bigger than Oswego in the conference. So rebounding is a huge point of emphasis. 14-52 remaining in the first half. 10-4, Oswego State. Zach Malin with Brian DeBurrow. Suniac Championship on WTOP 10. Another turnover, Zach. As Sparks takes that one away. Anderson on the fast break, can't hit the layup. That's a tough one, Anderson's gonna want that back. Arnold gets it up quickly to Jordan. Wallace to Beckett. Beckett inside and one from Makai Beckett. That's a big move from Makai Beckett. He can shoot the three really well, but he can also drive. He's a big guard, and he's able to get inside there, get to his spot, and finish for the air one. As we take a look at that last replay from Makai Beckett. Yeah, it's a beautiful move. He gets right past his defender, gets into the lane, and he's able to get and finish through contact in order to get to the line for the air one. You're definitely a guy that Brockport wants to get going early on here as their leading scorer. 10-7 Lakers as Beckett converts the end one. See a little full court pressure here, a little soft pressure from Brockport. Green to Sparks as the Lakers move over half court, 20 on the shot clock. Sparks to Achille. Achille on the inside, Anderson. Out to Green. His three-pointer is no good. Bowman with the offensive rebound, and he's fouled. A huge play. Getting David Grady the third into an early foul. 
That's it. That's another point that we were just mentioning, the rebounding. A great offensive rebound there from Bowman off the miss, and it's a really great way to get positioning inside, fight for the loose ball, and then go up strong, and he draws the foul. So Bowman's going to go to the line to shoot two, makes the first, and we have our first substitution. As Caleb Cook comes in for Oswego, and Jamal Achille will check out. A couple substitutions for Brockport as well, Devontae Jones as well as Monte Johnson come in for Tony Arnold and Colby Jordan. A couple Caleb of Cook. bigger guards for Brockport. Absolutely, and Caleb Cook for Oswego is a guy who can fill it up. He shoots 37% from three. You don't want to leave him open. He had some big shots last night to kind of keep Oswego in the game when their, start, when their starters weren't producing as well as they usually do. So that could be a guy that Brockport could want to focus in on here, especially running him off the three-point line. Cook with 12 points yesterday against New Paltz. A couple of three-pointers for him. Bowman makes both at the line. Joey Robeck comes in for Oswego, replaces Devin Green. Jones brings it up. Gets it to Grady. On the inside, David Grady. Tough move and can't finish. There's a couple times now where Brockport's had some good chances at the rim, unable to finish. Sparks with Johnson on him. He'll reset, gets the screen from Bowman. Sparks into the lane. Righty finish, can't hit it. Bowman offensive rebound and one. There he is again on the offensive glass. Bowman right there, cleans up the miss, puts it up through the contact. You see here, Sparks driving in. He wasn't able to get it to go. Another one that he might want back, but then Bowman is right there for the offensive rebound. His second in a couple possessions here. Fights through the contact again. This time he got the and one to fall, and he's right back at the free throw line. And Bowman making the most of his opportunities. Both offensive rebounds in this game so far. 13-23 to go in the first half. Our four, Cartier Bowman. Up to four rebounds so far this afternoon. As he converts the and one, 15-7 Lakers. Beckett. Tries the layup and can't hit. Tough defense by Oswego. Anderson back to Bowman. And Robeck to Cook. Anderson, good ball movement. Six to three-pointer. That is textbook ball movement off the rebound and the transition. Beautifully executed by the Lakers in a big-time three. The offense rolling for Oswego early in this one. 18 to seven. Another turnover. Jones turns it over, Cook to Anderson, and they can't complete it. But Coach Jason Leone clapping his team, loves what he sees so far. 12.39 to go in the first half. Yeah, defensively, Oswego seems really locked in. They're making sure to get in the passing lanes. They're forcing, as I mentioned earlier, tough, uncomfortable positions. That's a fast where they're going to want back. 2-1-1, open look at the basket, unable to complete the pass. Got to convert those down the stretch here in this championship game. That's the fifth Brockport turnover. Just over seven minutes into this one. Wallace out to Johnson. Three-pointer is no good. Wallace with the offensive rebound. Double teamed by Cook. Wallace keeps control, gets it out to Jones. 10 on the shot clock, Beckett. Gets the screen from Grady. Good defense by Anderson, but he's called for the reach-in foul. Yeah, it's a tough foul there for Anderson. Only seven to shoot. You don't want to commit that foul. He was in a tough spot, far away from the basket behind the line. Tough foul here. Get him an extra 20 seconds. Anderson with his hands in the cookie jar. A little bit too much for the official. As Jones into lane, denied by Cook. Sparks on the fast break. One on two, and he can't hit the layup. A lot of misses around the rim for both these teams early on, leaving points on the board. Sparks takes it away from Beckett. Lakers on the fast break. Sparks inside and can't finish. Couple of missed layups from Sparks. Brockport with a three on two. Wallace into the body of Cook. It's going to be a blocking foul. 11.36 to go. Zach Malama, Brian DeMuro, championship game on WTOP 10. Yeah, the pacing has really picked up here, Zach. Both teams kind of a little bit sloppy with the turnovers down the past couple of minutes. They're running back and forth. A couple of missed layups, as we mentioned. But overall, Oswego has to be happy with where they are right now. Up 18-7. to seven, Only allowed seven points in the first eight minutes or so here of this game. they got to be happy with where they are defensively, especially couple substitutions, Sparks and 
Anderson check out Green, as well as Sean Edwards come back in, and good defense by Oswego forces a timeout for Greg Dunn. And there it is again. You know, you see the defense there by Oswego suffocating the Brockport offensive players, and they're forced into a timeout, which is early. And, you know, in a championship game, every timeout matters. You don't want to have to be forced to call these timeouts on inbounds like that with 11.36 to go here in the first half. So that's another great defensive play by Jason Leone's squad. A 14-3 run for Oswego, 8 nothing in the last 250. Brockport is scoreless in the last 250, one for their last eight from the field, really struggling, and credit to the Oswego defense. Yeah, and Brockport is a team that likes to drive into the paint. They're not the best three-point shooting team. They don't shoot a lot of them, but when they do drive, as we mentioned, Oswego's always got two bodies there ready to stop them. They're playing good hands-up defense. We did see a foul there earlier uh, that was in between a charge and a block. He could have gone either way. They did call it a block. Might have had his feet in the restricted area. Nonetheless, they always had two guys right there ready for the, for the defense. It's Tyler Cowie checks in for Brockport. Wallace to Grady. David Grady the third inside on Green. Too easy. Yeah, he was huge for them last night. He's one of their best players, and their offense can run through him when nothing else is working. Green brings it up. 18-9 to nine, Oswego State. Brockport in a bit of a zone here now. 2-3 zone coming out after being in man for the first couple minutes. Cook to Achille. Achille with a post move down shuffled low. He feet, traveled. Yeah. yeah, just shuffled the feet. They got caught in between. Lost the ball a little bit. Shuffled his feet and go the other way. That's a turnover. That's the fourth turnover for Oswego. A lot of turnovers early in this game. 11 minutes to go in the first half. Arnold's screen from Grady. Good Great tip hands. by Edwards, and the Lakers have a fast break. Edwards can't hit the layup, but it's going to be a goaltend. Yeah. And good points in transition for us. We go six nothing points off turnovers. And that's another point of emphasis that we mentioned. The you see here, Edwards going into the basket. He gets to the layup up after great hands on the defensive end. Converts the defense into offense and two points off that turnover. Twenty to nine, Oswego State. Ten thirty-five to go in the first half. That's and travel. Johnson travels. Another turnover for Brockport. That's number eight in the first half. Yeah, that's another huge point here in this first half. The turnovers and the rebounds. You know, Oswego State is really capitalizing on Brockport's turnovers. They're also winning the rebound battle. Everything is going well for Oswego right now. they got to keep it up, though. Colby Jordan comes back in for Brockport. Green to Edwards. He'll try a three. It doesn't go. Green with the offensive rebound. Third offensive rebound for the Lakers. Achille looking for options. Double teamed in the paint. Green, three-pointer right into the Rockport bench, sinks it. Yeah, and he had something to say to that bench, too, after he made that one. We mentioned it. Devin Green, he can light it up. He had five threes last night. First three-pointer of the day for Green, 23-9, to nine, Oswego State. Cowie inside. He's fouled. It's a nice take by Cowie. It's unfortunate, Derek. It looked like Green... Might have got the clean block. I'm not sure if they called the foul on him or if it was on the man underneath. Nonetheless, still good defense there. No easy buckets, forcing Brockport to earn him at the line. You see here, Green gets to his spot, relocating into the corner, and a beautiful shot. This man is one of their leading scorers. And the best thing with this Os Oswego team, it's not just Jeremiah Sparks. He's their leader. We know that he's their guy. But they can go three, four deep. That can get you double digits on any given night. And Coach Jason Leone talked about that in his press conference, that any guy, they have so many playmakers, any one of these guys can step up. As Cowie at the line makes both free throws, David Grady takes his seat, and Makai Beckett comes back in for Brockport. 9.50 to go, 23-11. The Suniac Championship game, Zach Mallon with Brian DeMuro on WTOP 10. Caleb Cook with it. Cook into the lane. What a tough finish, Caleb Cook. That's a pretty move by Caleb Cook. In and out crossover, driving with the left hand. Tough finish. Lakers lead by 14. Arnold on the wing. Looking for Beckett. 
And they turn it over once again. Lakers hounding on defense. Don't leave them. Cook for three. It's a good Play look, though. Place would have erupted early they were ready in the to first go half. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, th these fans are ready to go crazy. But again, that's a great look. You want they're generating great looks for their shooters and defensively. Again, as you mentioned, that time caught Arnold in the air, made him force try to force a cross court pass. It was intercepted. The defense for us, we go. I know we keep mentioning it, but they are honestly the difference in this game right now. Zachary Rice comes in for Tony Arnold and Brockport. David Grady checks back in as well for Tyler Cowie. Lakers make a substitution with Achille checking out. Bowman coming back in. Beckett. Beckett around Sparks into the lane. Too much room. And that's what he does. You know, he noticed that when they were driving, they were putting two bodies on him. Stops that mid-range pull-up, gets to go. Beckett with five on the night. Sparks in the paint and it rolls around the rim. Another offensive rebound for Bowman. That's his third offensive rebound tonight to go along with a couple more on the defensive side. Cartier Bowman, we talked about him in the pregame. He is one of those guys that could elevate this Oswego team and he's killing it right now for them. Bowman with seven and six with 8.20 to go in the first half. Grady stepped out of bounds, another turnover. For Brockport, what does Brockport need to do to avoid these turnovers? They need to get their stars the ball in space. Right now, they're forcing a lot of action, trying to get inside, trying to get to their big man, which is where they won their game yesterday. They were able to force it inside, but right now, Oswego has double teams coming, and they're playing the rotations really well. So Brockport's got to swing the ball quickly, get a ball in and out of their hands. The more dribbling, the worse right now for Brockport. Green brings it up, gets it to Sparks. Sparks, a couple moves on Wallace. What a tough finish. That's tough, you know. He's the lefty. That's his dominant hand. He gets the behind the back to the floater from the left side. That's a beautiful shot by Jeremiah Sparks. Sparks with six. Lakers up 16. Jordan to Rice. No Finds spacing. Jordan again. Wallace, three-pointer. There you go, there you go, getting their guys in space. At the beginning of that possession, there was four guys on the right side of the court. One of them clears out, little dribble drive, kick across the court to their shooter, and Wallace is able to knock it down. First points of the day for Jihadi Wallace. Green with the answer, it doesn't go. Edwards tried to get it away from Grady, but the big man holds on to it. Rockport looking to go on a run. Rice. Has it taken away by Edwards. Good defense. Tried to get it to Green. And the Lakers turn it over. Beckett knocks down a three. That's their guy. He shoots 36% from the three-point line. You can't let him get going. A tough play for the Lakers. They got the steal. Just couldn't hold on to it. Ten-point game. Green. 10 on the shot clock. Green inside, can't finish. Grady with the rebound. It's a tough shot there. 6-0 run for Brockport. Beckett to Wallace. He'll try a three, and he can't hit. And it's going to be Kobe Jordan, and over the back foul yeah. on Caleb Cook. Yeah, Cook had a great box out there. Clearly an over the back foul. Oswego State right now doing a great job of boxing out on the defensive end, not allowing Brockport to get many second chance opportunities. And Brockport coach Greg Dunn very animated on the sideline. Did not agree with the call. 6.21 to go in the first half. 29-19 Oswego State. I feel like the Lakers have settled for a couple of deeper threes here in the last couple of possessions. They want to continue to drive and kick. You know, they're getting inside. They're playing a 2-3 zone is Brockport. So there's definitely holes in that. I think now actually looks like they're dropping back into a bit of man coverage here. Sparks brings it up. So the Lakers run a play. Here's Anderson. 10 on the shot clock. Green. Green, pull up mid-range, smooth from Devin Green. He's up to seven in the first half. Arnold 
to Jordan. Jordan inside, almost had it tipped away. Beckett, another three, and he's feeling it, Makai Beckett. And that's tough for the Lakers. You have great defense for the first half of the possession. Loose ball finds their shooter, and he's able to knock it down. Beckett up to nine. 5.25 to go in the first half. Anderson, good pass to Bowman on the inside. Too easy. Beautiful patience there by Bowman. Waiting for his defender to fly by. Goes up. Easy layup. Bowman, nine points, six rebounds so far in the first half. Arnolds can't hit his layup. Edwards gets the rebound, tipped out of bounds by Beckett. 5.02 remaining. In the first half, Suniac Championship game. The number two seeded Brockport Golden Eagles, the number one seeded Oswego State Lakers. You know, 33 Arnold, to 22, Oswego State. Excuse me, Zach. Arnold's a guy who he's, they really need to get him going. He was big for them last night at 14 and 7. Sparks tries a three. It's no good. Anderson with an offensive rebound and a huge foul. David Grady, the third. That's number two. Yeah, just to finish that thought, Arnold is a guy where they can, he can really score the ball at ease. Yesterday, when their offense was struggling, when Beckett wasn't able to get going, he was the guy who stepped up and put the ball in the basket for them, and he had a big game. He was the leading scorer against Oswego in that last matchup. So that's a guy they want to get going, but again, for the Lakers, a great second-chance opportunity there off the miss. Anderson, first free throw rolls off the rim. A substitution as Grady has to check out with those two fouls. Jacob Oka gets his first minutes of the day. Big loss for Brockport. Anderson hits the second, 34-22, Oswego State. 4.40 to go in the first half. Jordan to Beckett. And Beckett is really feeling it now. Up to 11. Yeah, he's feeling it. They got to find a way to stop him. They've held Jihadi Wallace in check. Only three points for him. Beckett's another guy they can't forget about. Anderson. Had it tipped away. Bunch of players on the floor. Green almost takes it away from Jordan, but Wallace has it. Wallace on the fast break. Fouled by Sparks. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, nice move there by Wallace, con getting his control of himself there as he was driving, going to the reverse. Wasn't able to get it to go, but he's heading to the line. And another turnover for the Lakers. You know, there's right now they've got only six, so they're definitely handling the ball well, but these turnovers, you can't let them add up. It's Wallace. Hits the first free throw. Caleb Cook comes in for Sean Edwards. Makai Beckett is on fire right now. How are the Lakers going to stop him? you got to try to run him off the three-point line, but also send some different looks his way. If they're staying in man a lot in this first possession, maybe go to a zone, try to shade some players his way to try to give him some different looks, try to make him uncomfortable. Wallace hits both free throws, an eight-point game. Green brings it up to Sparks. Back to Green. Cook. To Sparks. Down to Bowman. Bowman is denied by Beckett. Brockport on the fast break. Wallace can't hit the layup on the other end. Lakers go the other way. Sparks to Anderson. A dime and a half from Jeremiah Sparks. It's a beautifully run fast break, Zach. That's textbook on how to run the three on two break. Arnold. Around Anderson. Can't hit the layup. Oka looked for the offensive rebound. Lakers move quickly. Sparks. Hop step into the lane and can't hit the layup. Beckett's going to slow things down. 3.05 to go in the first half. 36 26. Oswego State. Beckett to Oka. Tipped away. Lakers on a fast break. Green. Is going to pull up for three. Doesn't go. And Cook with the tip in. Beautifully followed rebound by Caleb Cook off the miss. I don't even mind the shot there from Green. He's wide open. But the nice tip in and gets him two more points. 
Oka around Bowman, denied. Wallace gets it back, knocks down Sparks, no call. And Wallace finishes, Greg Dunn's going to talk things over. 2.30 to go, 38-28. Us, we go State, Zach Malamud, Brian DeMuro on WTOP10. What a start we've had to this championship game. These two teams really going at it. Makai Beckett leading Brockport in scoring right now with 13. And it's Aki Anderson with 10 for Oswego State. Yeah, you know, I think that if you're Brockport, you honestly, you feel okay about where you're at right now. You're still in this game despite a lot of turnovers and you're losing the rebound battle 17 to 11. But I think they got to really focus in on getting Wallace the ball more. He's only 2 of 5 right now, only 7 points. You saw he got that bucket there before the timeout. I think Wallace is one of those guys, along with Tony Arnold, as we mentioned, where you got to get them going because right now you take Beckett out of the game and they really have not had no other offense uh, for the entirety of this first half. And the turnover battle is the story. 12 for Brockport early or late in this first half. Six for Oswego State. Yeah, and that was another one of our points of emphasis coming into this game. The rebounding and the turnovers, and Oswego is winning both of those battles right now. So it's going to be really important for them to continue that in defensive intensity. The crowd's behind them here in their home gym. They got 22 and a half more minutes to win their, their back-to-back SUNYAC championship. They got to continue to play the way they've been. They can't let up. These teams get back out on the court. Monty Johnson's going to come in for Brockport. Sparks to inbound to Green. 2.30 to go. Sparks. Sparks gets the screen. He'll pull up and a lot of room for Jeremiah Sparks. It's a beautiful play out of the out of the timeout by Coach Jason Leon. Sparks with eight. Jordan. Around Cook, but denied once again. Cartier Bowman. Bowman is having a heck of a first half here, Zach. Sparks to Cook. Pull up jumper, Caleb Cook. Silky smooth release, gets by his man, gets to his spot, elevates from the mid range. Beautiful shot. Quick 4 0 run for us. We go. Wallace looking to answer. Inside on Sparks. Looked for a call, didn't get it. Lakers take it away. Anderson. What a behind the back dribble. Escapes two and makes the layup. Absolutely gorgeous move by Anderson. Beckett on the other side. He's going to be fouled by Cook. Had some words for the referee. Sparks told him, not right now. No technicals right now for the Lakers. Yeah, that's the last thing that they can afford. Now they have all the momentum here late in the first half. They're pulling away up by 16 right now. You want to finish this half off clean with no unnecessary uh, turnovers or points for Brockwood. The foul is actually going to go on Devin Green. That's number two. So Green's going to have to take a seat with 118 to go. Beckett's going to go to the line to shoot two. Or it's going to be a one and one, excuse me. And he can't hit the first one. Sparks with the rebound. Six nothing run in the last minute 10 for Oswego. 10 2 in the last 250. Sparks around Jordan and he lost it. Easy fast break for Wallace and he'll lay it in. Yeah, tough turn over there for Sparks. 14 point Lakers lead. Robeck to Sparks. 40 on the game clock. Great ball. Sparks. Movement. Hop step around a couple defenders. Robeck gets it to Sparks. He'll try a three. Doesn't go. Tipped out of bounds. Lakers are going to have possession. It's going to be 20 on the shot clock, 24 on the game clock. And Coach Jason Leone is going to get Devin Green back in. And guess who it was again on the offensive glass? That's Cartier Bowman again. In this first half, 10 rebounds, 9 points. This man has been all over the place on the boards in this first half. A point away from a first half double-double. And
Anderson, baseline out of bounds for the Lakers. Into Bowman, back to Anderson. A bit of a push off on Beckett, no call, and he makes the jumper. Hey, if they're not gonna call it, he rise up, elevates, all you can do is keep playing. Wallace is gonna hold for one. Five to go. Wallace pulls up for three and sinks it. That's a tough shot. And it's a big shot for Brockport. They needed that going into halftime. 13 points is a lot different than 16 points, Zach. And that's a big time shot for Jihadi Wallace. That's at the end of the first half. 46-33 Oswego State. A team that struggled yesterday. Not even thinking about that now. 46 points in the first half. Yeah, they're really shooting the ball well. They're shooting 54% from the field, only 20% from three, but they've been able to account for that with their turnovers. They've turned over Brockport 12 times. They have 10 more rebounds, and that's really the story of this first half. Zach Malamud, Brian DeMuro, we're going to send it to a quick break, and the guys will get things set for halftime as the Lakers lead at 46-33. to 33. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention.
That was quite the first half. Like I said, what were your guys' opening thoughts? Oswego came out firing. They d did what they had to do. You cannot let an away team get an early scoring run. And they proved to Brockport that last night was a fluke. Their defense played so much better. And Oswego looks like to be in the driver's seat right now. Yeah, the Oswego defense was great in transition. You know, they created stops. And really, their defense flowed into their offense. That's something they've always been great at, and it showed here today. They put Brockport on their heels. Brockport off to another slow start. We saw it yesterday. We'll see how the second half goes. Yeah, we'll see how the second half goes for sure. Oswego getting off to a faster start than they did against New Paltz yesterday. And we're going to take a look at some of these highlights in this game so far. And guys, it was quite the test for both teams. Oswego and field goals 20 of 37. Brockport just 12 of 26. Brian. Yeah, Oswego did a great job around the rim. You saw it in that last clip. You'll see it again here. Aki Anderson step back jumper right there. And they were bullying Brockport around the rim. Offensive boards galore. Three of them for Bowman. He has 10 rebounds total. And Brockport's big guys really couldn't do anything to stop the Lakers at the rim. Yeah, and you know, one thing to credit for this Lakers team, they're moving the ball really well around the basket. They're looking for that open pass, looking for that open shot. And I think that's credit why they were up 16 at this point in this game. Yeah, they were up 16. That was their biggest lead of the game. And they're really leading in second chance points, 15 to 0. So they're getting those rebounds and getting in the paint down and dirty there. 30 points in the paint for Oswego, just 12 for those Brockport Golden Eagles. And when Oswego, for this team, didn't really see it last night, they've sort of flipped the, the script, turned it around into this game. When they succeed and get momentum, they're really, really hard to beat. Yeah, I mean, we, you talked about their play in transition, and that is momentum. M their hands were in Brockport's cookie jar so many times. You see Anderson, Sparks stealing the ball away. They moved in fast break, and a couple transition buckets really pushed the lead for the Lakers. Yeah, and you said it best, you know, the transition. They're getting in the passing lanes, and that creates everything for success on defense. You know, Bowman, double-double watch right here. He's having a great game, but everyone is stepping up for this Oswego team. It's not just one guy standing out. Everyone's putting together a collective unit on offense. Aki Anderson, though, 5 of 6 from the field, 100% from 3 on the night. He's stepping up really big for the Lakers, I will say. Yeah, being one of the best players on the court right now. And it's important to note, Oswego being disciplined with the basketball. Just 7 turnovers for them compared to 12 turnovers for Brockport. Now, speaking of Brockport, they looked dominant against Cortland just yesterday. What do they have to do to come back in this one tonight? Uh, attack the rim. They showed a couple of plays towards the end of that half where they moved the ball, they found lanes to the basket, and that's where they were starting to hit in buckets. And then the three-point shooting kind of opened up, but they really do need to attack the basket, attack Bowman, attack Achille. If they get them in foul trouble, the Lakers' offense is going to start to collapse, and they really need those guys on the court. No yeah, I think you said it best in the offensive end, attack the rim, because Oswego, they are a smaller team. You know, if you get them into foul trouble, it's going to be harder to protect the paint. But one thing I will say on the defensive side, you got to protect the paint a little bit better. Have them shoot more threes, because right now, Oswego is 2 for 10 from 3, 20%. You want to try to rattle them a little bit, have them stay on the outside of the arc. And you said 2 for 10 from 3, and this, this team has a lot of really great three-point shooters. You think about Joey Roback, think about Devin Green, want to get those two guys more involved. So how exactly does Oswego keep up this momentum to get their sixth Suniac win in just 12 years for Coach Leone? You got to keep playing strong defense. It's a big turnaround from last night. The defense wasn't great last night. Tonight, they're everywhere. We talked about hands in the cookie jar, hands in the passing yeah. lanes, but they're also playing Beckett. They're playing Wall so tight at the perimeter. They're playing them tight everywhere on the court. You see double teams down low, and that's going to be the key for them in this game. Keep those guys, keep the ball out of their hands or play super, super tight defense. Yeah, you got to keep it full throttle here in the second half. The job's not done, as Kobe Bryant Job's not finished. After job's not, not finished. Job's not done. But... They, uh, they say you want to try and uh, convert your defense to offense. Just keep on doing that. 
I think what they need to do, though, is create more possessions and what they're doing with those possessions. Try to create more turnovers against Brockport, rattle them a little bit, and just make sure make them know that, hey, we're here to stay and try to make them more uncomfortable. Yeah, they've been the top dogs for a while, and they need to keep this up to remain the top dogs. It's the biggest game of the season. Why not? So. Little little question for you guys. Who do you guys think was the best player in the first half, and who do you guys think needs to really step up in the second half to make their mark in this game to win the SUNYAC championship? Uh, for me, I'll still go to Key Anderson. Huge turnaround from last night. Last night, pretty unefficient from the four. I think yeah. he was like one for nine from the field. Tonight, leads all scorers so far, 14 points. He's passing the ball well. He's getting shots to fall. He is the biggest player so far. Yeah, I think you said it best. Right behind him, though, I think it is Cartier Bowman, who mm -hmm. 10 rebounds already, 3 of 4 from the field, 75% on the night. Up for Brockport, uh, Beckett, his effort's not going unnoticed, though, I think. No. You know, 5 of 7 from the field, 71%, 66% uh, on the night from 3. And for Oswego, I'm hoping uh, Robeck steps up a little bit. You know, we really mm -hmm. haven't seen him do much. He's been out there for only five minutes, no shots, nothing out there. He's just running around right now. Yeah, like you yeah. said, Beckett really knocking on the door to try and make that all SUNYAC t uh, team for this upcoming tournament. So that's going to do it for us here in the Al Roker studio. But don't go anywhere because the second half of the Max Steel Gymnasium is coming up right after this break. It's the SUNYAC Championship right here on WTOP 10. Good job, guys. Say, hey, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. Told me it was Kitty from Glee. Yeah, what it's is it? Al Roker. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back on in inside Max Seal Gymnasium, Zach Malamud, Brian Zamuro, the SUNYAC Championship game on WTOP 10 at halftime. The Lakers of Oswego State lead it 46 to 33 over the Brockport Golden Eagles. And in that first half, the big story was offensive rebounding for the Lakers, Brian. Yeah, we came into this game saying, Zach, that the offensive rebound and rebounding in general was one of the points of emphasis for both these teams. Historically this season, the teams who have the team who has won the rebounding battle has won the game. And so far today, Oswego State leads Brockport 7-1 to one in offense rebounds. And a big part of that is Cartier Bowman. Cartier Bowman, you brought him up. Nine points, ten rebounds in the first half. One point away from a double-double. He's been an absolute beast for the Lakers so far. He really has, and if you watch this game, you see he's everywhere on the offensive glass especially. He's fighting through two bodies, just getting his box out, securing the rebounds. He's gotten two foul calls off of offensive rebounds and gotten himself to the line where he shot it three of three from the free throw line. So Cartier Bowman, one of the guys that we highlighted in the pregame, and he's come to play tonight, and he's giving his team great minutes and great production on the floor. And on the other side for Brockport, their stars are stepping up. 
Makai Beckett with 11 points in that first half. Jahadi Wallace with 12 points. The Stars are coming out to the party here. Yeah, Oswego State's really got to watch those two guys because if they get hot the way Beckett started to in the first half and Wallace hit that big three at the end, you don't want to let them creep back into this game. 13 points, I think the Lakers are comfortable right now, but you don't want to get too comfortable where you get complacent. You want to make sure you continue to hound them defensively. They forced a lot of turnovers. That 12, actually, is how many turnovers Oswego was able to force in that first half. You want to make sure you continue to hound them defensively and don't give up open looks. And going into the second half, it's not going to be easy for these Lakers. Brockport yesterday struggled in the first half in their semifinal matchup against Cortland, which shot 55% and then 50% from field goal percentage and three-point percentage, respectively. And not going to be easy. Game's not over yet. Yeah, and even you saying that, there's 57% from three right now is Brockport. So despite only shooting seven threes, they're still making four out of seven. So that's another high percentage looks that they're generating. You can't let them get comfortable from that three-point line. So we're going to get set for the second half. The number one seeded Oswego State Lakers, the number two seeded SUNY Brockport Golden Eagles. Second half for a SUNYAC championship and a trip to the NCAA tournament on the line as these two teams will send their guys out you know for the lakers here you gotta keep going early you know keep pushing the pace keep being aggressive defensively you don't want to like get complacent as i mentioned especially on the offensive end as well you know you want to make sure you're still attacking the basket generating good high percentage looks for their best players the lakers are going to start with possession they're in all white moving from right to left. Brockport in all green moving from left to right in the second half as Achille will inbound it for the Lakers. Gets it in to Anderson. Good pressure by Tony Arnold. Anderson coughs up his dribble, gets it to Sparks. Sparks into the lane. A tough layup. It's a grown man move by Jeremiah Sparks, their best player. Again, getting him going early is super important for this Lakers squad. Sparks with 10. Arnold. You said Tony Arnold try and get him involved. An early bucket. Yeah, those are his first points tonight. It took him 20 minutes, but he's finally on the board. They definitely want to get him going. Sparks to Anderson. Pull up from the free throw line and he knocks it down. Beautiful poise and control there by Anderson getting to his spot elevating and delivering over Wallace. Stepping up to the plate Aki Anderson 16 points so far. Arnold again. That's a good pass. Inside to Grady. Shot affected by Achille. Jump ball. Brockport's gonna keep possession. Baseline out of bounds. Yeah, it was actually a really good pass there by Arnold. I fell inside his man. Just Grady was unable to get it up and up towards the rim. 18.57 to go in the second half. Miscommunication there again. Jordan with a great pass to Grady. Slams it home. 50-37. to 37, Oswego. Green. On the inside and finishes. It's a beautiful way of using his body, his left shoulder, to shade his defender, getting him to the right hand and able to finish. Lakers have made eight of their last nine field goals. Achille takes it away from Arnold. Great defense. Sparks looking to extend the lead. Sparks on the inside, can't hit. 52-37 Oswego State. Wallace on the other end and bodies sparks to the rim. Yeah, he was on a mission there, Zach. He was getting to the paint. Little discard, no call. The refs have let him play tonight. You know, they're not calling a lot of fouls. Brockport back into a little zone here. Green to Anderson from the free throw Dude. line. 18 for Aki Anderson. Aki Anderson get into his spot again. He loves that mid-range. And also it's just a beautiful way of breaking down the press, or the, the zone rather. Getting it to the middle, working from there. Beautiful shot. Arnold. 
to Jordan on the inside. Out to Wallace. Ten on the shot clock. And he turns it over. Anderson. Gets it to Bowman and it's tipped away. A foul called on Tony Arnold. Yeah, the Lakers are out and running right now. Their defense is feeling great. They're getting, they're really forcing Brockport into positions where they do not want to be midair, having to take jump past opportunities, and they're forcing turnovers. First foul on Tony Arnold. First team foul of the second half, 17 18 to go in this one. Bowman at the line. Can't hit the first. Still a 15-point lead for the Lakers. It's Bowman's first miss from the line tonight. He was 3-3 three three before that miss. Bowman can't hit either. Brockport bring it up with Arnold. Arnold on the inside is fouled. Going up. They're letting Arnold get wherever he wants right now. He's, he's getting right into the paint with ease, able to dish to his teammates earlier, now taking it for himself, getting himself to the line. Lakers got to really focus in on him, make sure he can't get going because he's their point guard. He's the guy who leads them when they need someone to step up. And, you know, with Beckett and Wallace already feeling pretty good this game, with both of them in double digits, you don't want Arnold to get going here either. Arnold's averaging almost 13 points per game. This season. Can't hit the second. Lakers move quickly. Anderson tried to draw the contact, didn't get the call. Yeah, he had open lane. He could have just taken the layup, I think. Arnold out to Wallace. Thought about a three and gets it back to Arnold. 20 on the shot clock. Arnold on the inside and a tough finish. There he is again, getting himself right into the paint. Nice little Euro step to get separation and get his layup up. Sparks. Lakers got to move the ball here. Green. 15 on the shot clock. Back out to Sparks. Double teamed. Anderson will try a three, and it's no good. Arnold with the rebound. Better ball movement, though, by the Lakers. You force a pretty high percentage shot. I like the look from Anderson, who's been hot. Arnold, once again, and a foul called on Jamal Akili. Tony Arnold, five of his own. Yeah, you can tell that Coach Dunn definitely probably said something to them in the locker room, especially Arnold himself. He had no points at halftime, and he's come out super aggressive here in this second half, and he's brought his team to within 12 with a chance to get down to 10 if he can knock down the free throws. Arnold makes the first. Lakers make a substitution. Caleb Cook checks in for Jamal Akili. Arnold, a 66% free throw shooter, can't hit the second. Green, almost turned it over. Anderson settles things down to Sparks. And the Lakers will set up their offense. 15 on the shot clock. Sparks to Cook. Three from Caleb Cook. As their shooter, Zach, he can light it up quickly. You can't give him any room. Cook had a couple threes yesterday, has one today. And good work on the defensive side, knocks it away from Grady. Yeah, Cook is everywhere right now on the defensive end as well. There with the help defense, knocking it loose. Can get a timeout here for the Lakers. Coach Jason Leon's going to talk things over. 15-30 to go in the second half, 57-43 Oswego State Suniac Championship game on WTOP 10. Zach Malamud, Brian DeMuro, and Caleb Cook with a big time three-pointer. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Caleb Cook does not need a lot of space to get off his shot. Over a 36% free throw, uh, three-point shooter, and there he knocks it down again. You see, with not much room, but even the little space, he'll be able to get off his shot, and it's a, beautifully, a beautiful stroke. And he's able to knock it down a big three to extend this lead up to 14. 
with Brockport kind of knocking on the door, trying to get it under double digits, but that cook, that, that cook three puts them up by 14 again. You mentioned Brockport. The Golden Eagles starting this second half, four for six from the field. They've really gotten things going. couple points from the free throw line. Brockport's been busy on offense. I think that starts with Tony Arnold, as you mentioned. You know, the way that he's aggressive and the way that he's been able to drive into the paint, find his teammates, also find his own shot and get to the free throw line. It slows the game. It allows his teammates to keep their composure, keep their stamina. Because, you know, when you come back, you need, to, you, you need to score, but you also need to attack the paint. You know, you can't just settle for a bunch of threes because you're down big. You need to attack the paint, and then that is what opens up the perimeter. So I think that Tony Arnold has really taken control of this second half so far for Brockport. they got to continue to work off that and hopefully for Brockport find their open shooters. Colby Jordan baseline out of bounds for Brockport finally gets it in to Tony Arnold. 15 on the shot clock. Arnold will pull up and can hit. Ball tipped around and a foul called on Brockport. It's going to go on Colby Jordan. Number two on him. Yeah fighting for that rebound. It was loose for a little bit there but he did come over the back. I like the call from the refs. Arnold, even with those couple of points early in the second half, shooting two for six from the field. Green, and a foul called off the ball. Makai Beckett, I believe. Beckett not happy with the call. That's going to be his first, team's third. I think the Lakers here are in a position where they don't need to settle for threes. I see there. Caleb Cook trying to come off the screen, trying to get him open. I think that they should still keep driving and trying to create the driving kick opportunities rather than settling for threes. Anderson with it to Bowman. Ten on the shot clock. Sparks. Couple moves. Inside has it tipped away by Arnold. Out to Beckett for three, and he can't hit. Arnold, offensive rebound. Into the body of Cook and can't finish. He's going to want that one back, Zach. Point blank look. Wasn't able to finish. Might have been some contact. Sparks. 14.30 to go. Green. Iso on the inside. Can't finish. Tipped around. Another offensive rebound. Green once again and is denied by Grady. That's good defense by Brockport. Not to foul. Beckett. On the other end, what a tough finish by Makai Beckett. Oh, yeah, tough finish. You said it, Jack, and that's Beckett again. He's up to 13 points on the night. Lead cut to 12. Anderson. Anderson can hit his pull-up jumper. Wallace. Around Sparks and hit off his foot. Looking for a foul. Didn't get the call and a turnover for Brockport. That's number 15. Yeah, this Lakers defense has been everywhere, especially even right there. You see Wallace is trying to go into the paint, but he had two Laker bodies right in front of him, cutting them off, forcing them to think that extra split second. And that time is where he loses it off his foot out of bounds. It's a turnover. Anderson. Looking to get Sparks involved. Iso on Wallace. Sparks goes up looking for Bowman. Had it taken away. Arnold. Into Anderson. Finds Grady. And Jordan will try a three and airballs it. Grady keeps it in though. Bowman. Has it taken away by Beckett. Yeah, that's not, that's not Jordan's shot right there. He's not... A great three-point shooter. He was wide open, though, so I understand taking it, but we got to stop it here. They're going to try and figure out the shot clock as Grady did save it. Ball did not hit the rim. They're going to figure out how much time is on the clock. 13.02 on the game clock. Yeah, I think the possession changed, actually, because... One, because one of the Lakers players, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure exactly which one, they got that loose ball and then got it taken away right back so they might get a full 30 here Lakers scoreless in the last three minutes still holding on to a double digit lead though so their defense has definitely been stepping up Arnold 
Gets the screen from Grady. Arnold inside. Tough finish. Tough finish. Arnold up to eight. Lakers got to find some offense here. Green. Gets the screen from Bowman. Green finds Cook. Robeck. Good to defense Cook. by Brockport. Eight on the shot clock. And Cook turned it over. Yeah, the Lakers are in some dangerous territory right here. They still have a comfortable lead at 10 points, but their offense has struggled in the past couple minutes, as you said, in a bit of a scoring drought here. And Brockport's trying to find something with Tony Arnold getting involved. He's getting to the bucket, getting his points. Lakers really got to find some offense quickly. Lakers' 10th turnover of the game. Team that only averages 11 turnovers per game. Wallace fouled. And he'll go to the line to shoot two. Try to cut it to eight. I like Brockport's intensity here in the second half, and I like their game plan to attack the basket because, you know, they're shooting good from three still, 44%. But that being said, you see here the attack from Wallace inside. They've gotten to the free throw line a lot here in this second half. And as we mentioned, it slows the game down. It gets them some easy looks for some free throws, which should be easy points. And they've climbed back into this game down by 10 here with a chance to cut it under double digits. Wallace can hit the first. Crowd having an impact as Sparks comes back in for Robeck. Sparks has struggled tonight, you know, only 5 of 13. Still 10 points, though. I think you got to keep trying to get him involved, try to get him good looks and high percentage shots. We'll let him see a couple go through. Wallace makes the second nine point Lakers lead. Sparks will bring it up. Anderson to Edwards. Green. And he can't hit his jumper. It's a tough shot, though. It's good defense again by Brockport. Lakers lit on the basket right now. Arnold blocked by Anderson. Anderson thought about going into Grady. Held up. Edwards. On the inside, and he can't hit. Still a nine point Lakers lead. Grady. This jumper's no good. Five min or four minute scoring drought here for the Lakers. Sparks to Green. Tries to break it. Can't. Looks for the offensive rebound. Ball stayed in bounds. Green, Green has it. Sparks, the pump fake, can't hit the three. Another great look off a great pass fake. Unable to finish, though. Beckett tries a three. That one's no good. Both teams really struggling right now. Sparks has it tipped away by Arnold. And it's going to be a foul on Tony Arnold. It's a tough call. Arnold going for the ball there. I think he kind of just went over the top of Sparks. End-to-end -end stuff from both teams. Yeah, both teams starting to play a lot more physical. You're getting a lot of loose balls. Both teams fighting for it. We got a close game here in the championship matchup. 10.30 to go in this one. Lakers with a nine-point lead. Cook. Eight on the shot clock. In the paint. Gets it to Green, and it's taken away by Beckett. Rockport turning up the defense. Arnold for three. This is dangerous territory here for the Lakers. They haven't scored in five-plus minutes. Now the lead is cut to six. Tony Arnold has been the X factor in the second half for Brockport, and just like that, they're right back in this after that big time pull up transition three off the turnover by Tony Arnold. Arnold up to 11 and Brockport have silenced this crowd a bit. Lakers scoreless in the last five minutes and 45 seconds and Coach Leon calls timeout. What is he telling his guys here? 
they got to slow the pace down, in my opinion. I think that they're getting beat in transition. They haven't scored in five plus minutes. They got to set up a nice play, set up a good open look. And honestly, Zach, they've had open looks from the field. They just haven't been able to hit. Sparks to that open three. Uh, just then, a good look at a layup. It was blocked, though. Good defense. I mean, as much as the Lakers have struggled in the past couple minutes, you have to also give credit to Brockport's defense for turning up the intensity in the second half. Lakers with 12 turnovers now. Six in the second half. How does Brockport now keep up their success? A, a great run for them, 8 nothing. Well, the Lakers are going to have to start to double-team Tony Arnold or at least send help his way when he drives. They got. I think the Lakers, first and foremost, got to stop him from penetrating inside the arc. They got to keep him around a three-point line, show him different bodies, show him different looks, because once he gets inside, he's been a great decision maker in the second half, passing when he needs to pass, shooting when he needs to shoot. He's been the key for them, as we mentioned, up to 11 points. They got to stop Tony Arnold first and foremost, and that's how they're going to hold this lead. But right now, like we mentioned, big scoring drought. They got to find something offensively. 10 12 to go. Suniak Championship on the line. Green inbounds to Anderson. Sparks on the inside. Can't hit the layup. It's a good look there, too. Just couldn't finish it. He elevated and just left it on the front of the rim. Jordan. Goes around Cook and can't hit the layup. Good Cook rebound. gets the rebound. It's a big rebound there by Caleb Cook. Sparks will bring it up. He'll take it into the lane once again and denied by Grady. It's a four shot there by Sparks. I would have liked to see him pull it back out and generate a better high percentage look. Going on two people, it's a tough shot. 9.25 to go. Six point game. Arnold. To Grady and Beckett. Ten on the shot clock. Beckett inside, tipped away, and tipped out off Beckett. Good defense by Oswego. It's great defense, and that's the Lakers' defense is what's keeping them in this game right now. They are one for their last 12 on the offensive end, one of their, one, one of their last nine from three. Six and a half minutes scoreless. Lakers looking for anything. Anderson, fade away, jumper, and he breaks the drought. He has been huge for the Lakers today. He's up to 20 points to lead their squad. Without him, I don't know where this Lakers team would be. Jordan for Brockport, 8.40 to go. Grady, and Beckett's fouled by Green. That's number three. Fourth team foul. Yeah, on the last possession, uh, Green had his hand right in there on Beckett as well. No call on the last possession, but this time it was a little bit too much contact. The ref didn't like it and called for the foul. Arnold tries a jumper, and it rattles out. Green with the rebound. Brockport now scoreless in almost two minutes. Anderson. Looking for options. Grady on him. Anderson. Ten on the shot clock. Down to Bowman. What a pass. What a pass by Anderson. Bowman finishes. Absolutely beautiful pass there by Anderson. Bowman controls and finishes. Bowman now with a double-double. 11 points to go along with his 12 rebounds. Quick 4-0 run for the Lakers. 7.50 to go. Wallace to Beckett. He'll try a three. It doesn't go. Wallace gets the rebound. 20 on the shot clock. Wallace. What a pass to Jordan, and he finishes. Yeah, he might have got away with a little bit of a push there, but again, the rest have been letting him play all night, and a great pass to find his teammate Jordan, who finishes with the layup. Eight-point game, 7.20 to go. Anderson. With Grady on a mismatch down low. Down to Bowman in the post on Jordan. Bowman foul, that one! Big time play, Cartier Bowman. He's been everywhere tonight. You 
know, the fans have rubbed it after that one, and rightfully so. The one-two punch right now of Aki Anderson and Cartier Bowman has been unstoppable for the Lakers in this one. And he gets the and one to go head into the line. Bowman can hit the free throw. 13 points, 12 rebounds on the night. Wallace. Good move around Sparks. Inside and a great finish. Eight point game, 6.45 to go. Green will have it for the Lakers. Anderson on the high post. Green. Anderson, double teamed and turned it over. Lakers do a good job getting back. And Sparks will bring it up. Out to Cook. Cook tries a jumper. It's no good. It's a good look, though. I like the shot from Caleb Cook. He got to his spot. Wasn't able to finish, though. Arnold can't hit the layup. Green for three. It's no good. I don't like that shot from Green. I know he's been high the past couple of nights, but that's an early in the shot clock shot from deep range. A couple feet behind the three-point arc. Would have liked to see them set up a play, maybe get it inside to Bowman or back to Anderson. Nail biter at Max Zeal. Wallace inside. He's fouled. Going up. And it's going to go on Devin Green. Excuse me, that's going to go on Jeremiah Sparks. Yeah, Wallace there getting inside. Nice moves, body control. Got to the line. Didn't know if he was, I thought he might have been trying to pass that one, but the refs gave him the benefit of the doubt, giving him two free throws. Wallace at the line. Hits the first seven point game. Couple substitutions. Jordan and Arnold come out. Jones and Johnson come in for Brockport. Wallace with a double double of his own. 18 points to go along with 10 rebounds right now. Wallace hits both free throws. Six point game, 538 to go. Hold on tight. Suniac Championship on the line. Anderson. Green. Green around Jones and finishes. Lead up to eight. Jones to Johnson and Beckett. Beckett mines Johnson. 13 on the shot clock. Beckett again. He'll try a three. Hits the front rim. Green with the rebound. Beckett's got to get going. He's trying to find his shot. Great defense there by the Lakers. Sparks. 440 to go. Cook to Anderson. He'll try a jumper. Rattles out. But I like Anderson there at that high post. I like what he's been able to do from the mid-range. It's a good look. And a turnover for Brockport. Beckett tried to find Wallace. That's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. A miscommunication here. Down by eight. They need all the possessions they can get. They can't give it away after getting a good stop defensively. They give it right back to the Lakers with 4.27 to play. Arnold and Jordan come back in. Quick rest for them. Johnson and Jones take a seat. Four fifteen on the game clock. Force Gr pass there. Green turned it over. Jordan on the other end and finishes. It's a bad turnover by the Lakers. They needed that after their own after they forced their own turnover, turning it right back over and giving up two easy points in a fast break is not good. Six point game, 65-59. Green to Cook for three is no good. Arnold can't finish the layup on the other end. A little bit out of control. 
and couldn't hit it. I'd love to see the Lakers slow it down here as they're doing and attack the basket. Anderson will set things up, 15 on the shot clock. Anderson denied by Wallace. What a save. Bowman with the save. Sparks to Green. Finds Bowman down low. Puts it up and in. Yeah, what a pass by Green. Bowman has been everywhere. The save earlier in the possession, getting himself inside with a layup. He's been absolutely unbelievable for the Lakers tonight. 15 for Cartier Bowman. Eight-point lead. 2.50 to go. Beckett answers right away. That's too easy. Got to get a body in front of him. We got to go one here, Zach. Coming down to the wire. Anderson. To Green. Green can't finish. Out of bounds off Devin Green. Brockport ball, 2.27 to go. It's good defense there by Brockport. Lakers need to stop here. Wallace will bring it up. Sparks on him. Beckett with the screen. Wallace inside has it taken away. Great hands by Devin Green. Coming down to the last two minutes. Six point Laker lead. Green with it. Green finds Anderson, the floater from Aki Anderson. What a beautiful touch there by Aki Anderson. He's up to 22 points, shooting 10 of 16. The efficiency tonight, he has been the MVP for the Lakers so far. And Greg Dunn calls a timeout, an eight-point Laker lead. A minute 49 to go. They're Brockport now. What's the message from Greg Dunn? You know, I like what they've done with Tony Ar Arnold. I think they got to get him the ball in his hands. I would like to see some off-ball movement, trying to set up Beckett for three, maybe get a roll from Grady or one of their big men inside. But honestly, it's tough right now because the Lakers are showing a lot of bodies inside. So the driving lanes are not just there the way they were earlier in the second half. Great adjustment by Coach Leon and the Lakers. But I do like trying to find Becky here and continue to get the ball into Arnold's hands, make him make the decisions because he's been made some he's been making some pretty good ones here in the second half. And if your coach Jason Leone just called the timeout, try and set things up. Eight point lead. Just keep it out of Brockport's reach. Yeah, you're basically if you're coach Leone right now, you're telling your team no threes and don't give up any easy buckets quick. In the early in the shot clock, there's the time and the clock is on their side right now. They want to force Brockport. It's not only tough shots, but tough two point shots. No threes. That should be the main message right here because we know how three pointers can update. We know how three pointers can lead to quick comebacks. Lakers have four timeouts remaining. Brockport with just two. A lot of games still left. Minute 49 left. These teams will come out. Edge of your seat. Suniac Championship and an NCAA tournament berth on the line. Jordan inbounds to Wallace. Let's see if they bring Arnold up here or if they're going to run it through Wallace. Wallace to Jordan. Back to Wallace. Beckett will try a deep three. And it doesn't go. Sparks with the rebound. Rockport looking for a travel. No call. Big rebound there by Sparks and to control that ball. That's a big time rebound. Sparks going to waste some clock here. Jordan really close up on him. Green from the elbow. Doesn't go. Tipped around. Lakers offensive rebound. Story of the game, Zach. Offensive rebounds, Lakers up 11-5 to five in that category. And there's a big one from Caleb Cook. 10 on the shot clock, minute on the game clock. Sparks, step back, jumper! And it's ticked away, and a kick ball violation on Tony Arnold. 
Great defense by Caleb Cook. 51 seconds to go, Lakers up 10. The crowd loves it. Caleb Cook has been everywhere tonight on the defensive end. These fans are on their feet, and Max Zia, they can feel it. Lakers with a 10-point lead with under a minute to play. Zeal is rocking right now. 51 seconds left. So let's go Lakers chant. Comes from the crowd. Achilles to inbound. Ball. Gets it into green. He'll dribble it around and he's fouled by Colby Jordan. Yeah, that's big. Getting the ball inbounds there was the priority. They got it in quick. A nice out-of-bounds play. Just got to make your free throws now. Rockport had a foul to give. 16 fouls. One more, and the Lakers will shoot one and one. Achille with the inbound. 47 seconds left. Into green. Exactly the guy that the Lakers wanted. 78% on the year from the line. As Achille comes out for Bowman. 47 seconds left. As Green goes to the line to shoot a one and one. Got to make your free throws. As you mentioned, this is the guy they want at the line. Green's first is good. Reliable free throw shooter, Devin Green. And Green second. Doesn't go. 11 point lead. No Brock fouls. Brockport moved quickly. Beckett double teamed. Almost turned it over. Wallace into the paint. Had it tipped away. Grady. His layup's no good. Sparks with the rebound. And he's fouled by Colby Jordan. Great defense by the Lakers. No fouls getting their hands up, forcing a tough shot. And they can feel it now, Zach. Brockport scoreless in the last 215. Lakers with a 5-0 run in that time span. Sparks is going to go to the line to shoot one and one. 31 seconds to go. Can't hit the free throw. Brockport still with a chance, and Arnold turned it over. Sparks read it perfectly. And that's a fitting way to seal the deal here. Jeremiah Sparks, the leader of this team, struggled tonight. Only 6 of 17, 12 points. But we all know he's the guy who's the leader of this squad, comes up with the steal to seal the game, basically. Sparks with... The one and one mits the first. 27 seconds to go. Lakers with a 12 point lead. 20th turnover for Brockport on that last play. And the Jordan Elbridge native hits both free throws. 13 point game. Wallace will go easy to the rim. No fouls for the Lakers. Greg Dunn's going to call a timeout. 22 seconds to go, 74-63, Oswego State. Zach Malamud, Brian DeMuro, the championship game for this SUNYAC conference season. And Brian, this game's basically out of reach. What do you think Greg Dunn's telling his guys? Foul right away, most likely look for the steal. Yeah, you got to look for a steal here. You got to look for a quick three. There's got to be a lot that has to go their way if they want to get back and tie or take the lead here down the stretch. But ultimately, I want to just say, I, Coach Jason Leon, he had his team after what I would, I think they would say it was a subpar performance last night. They came out and they were aggressive from the beginning, both offensively and defensively. And he has them in a position right now where they are comfortably in the lead with 22 seconds to play where they can advance and not only win the SUNYAC conference, but advance to the NCAA tournament, which is huge. So shout out to Coach Leon, especially assuming they can come away with this win. And the Lakers, some huge production so far. Leading scorer, Aki Anderson, 22 points on the night. Big time performance. He has been absolutely huge for them in this one. He's only averaging 11 points per game. 
but tonight, like you mentioned, 22. Great efficiency. Also knocked down a three. Three rebounds to go along with it. He has been everywhere for them, and especially when they needed a bucket, he's been that guy. Him and Cartier Bowman, as we've highlighted, Bowman with 15 points, 13 rebounds for this Lakers squad. Achille to inbound. Gets it into green, tipped away by Jordan. It's good defense there by Brockport. 21 and a half seconds on the game clock. Lakers have four timeouts if they need one here. Achille gets it into Anderson. He's fouled by Jordan. And that's going to be the fifth personal on Colby Jordan. Another good free throw shooter heading to the line here. Anderson 73% on the season. Just got to knock down those free throws. Colby Jordan is going to check out on Brockport. Going to get some of their guys out of the game now. A tremendous season for the Brockport Golden Eagles, a team that made it to the semifinals last year, lost to Oneana in this gym. This year, make it to the SUNYAC Championship. An unbelievable season for Brockport. Yeah, absolutely. you got to give all the respects to Coach Dunn and that Brockport Golden Eagle squad. They gave Oswego fits, honestly, um, for a little while in this game. And also, they were the only team that beat them in this gym this entire season. You know, Oswego right now, 20-game win streak. If they win this one, 21 straight. You know, they gave Oswego all they could, all they could and ultimately it just fell short here in the final. Anderson can't hit the free throws. Green fouls him. Lakers had a foul to give. 19 on the game clock. Rockport with possession. Edwards going to check into the game for Devin Green. Jones to Rice. Rice tries a three. Off the backboard. No good. And Sparks will dribble it out for the second straight year. The Oswego State Lakers are Suniac champions. Coach Jason Leone's sixth Suniac title. His Lakers have done it again with a 74 to 63 win over the Brockport Golden Eagles. The first back-to-back -back championship for the Lakers in this conference in their program's history. An unbelievable game despite having a bit of a scoring drought in the middle of the second half. Oswego led end-to-end -end, and it was a very well-played game by both squads. The Lakers able to come with the win. The fans here at Max Zeal absolutely love it on their feet. Beautifully done for the Lakers. The Lakers in the handshake line right now, but the big performers we have to give Cartier Bowman his credit. We already talked about Aki Anderson. How about 15 points, 13 rebounds from the big man, Cartier Bowman. Coach Jason Leone said that it's the first time Cartier Bowman has played in these meaningful type of games. What a performance from the transfer. Yeah, he stepped up huge when his team needed it. We came into this game talking about rebounds. Not only offensive rebounds, but defensive rebounds as well. Oswego led that category 42 to 34. They out-rebounded Brockport by eight, and Bowman had 13 of those rebounds on his own. Also, I want to highlight six of seven from the field. The efficiency was off the charts, taking high percentage shots, and he was absolutely huge for this team. And as you mentioned, Aki Anderson, Filling up the scoreboard, 22 points, 10 of 16 from the field. He did everything, and he was their guy today. Because Jeremiah Sparks, as great as he's been, he struggled. Devin Green also struggled, struggled a little bit today. Only 5 of 15 for him. But nonetheless, Bowman and Anderson stepped up when they needed him to, and they came up big here for the Lakers. And the story of this one that Brockport's going to think about was the turnovers. 20 on the night. Oswego had 15 of their own. But Brockport's five more was basically the difference in this one. Yeah, and I think the first half 
turnovers really killed Brockport down the stretch as well. I feel like in the first half, they got off to a very slow start, only seven points in the first eight, nine minutes of play, and that kind of set the tone. The Lakers built a double-digit lead, and they didn't really look back. The lowest the lead ever got was six points here in the second half, so the Lakers did control it end-to-end, and it was a really, really well-fought game from both sides, but as you mentioned, turnovers killed Brockport here in this one. As Coach Jason Leone, a great moment. Hugs his mom in the stands. His sixth SUNYAC title. Unbelievable. Yeah, he has done absolute wonders for this program. You got to give him a ton of respect, a ton of credit. As the ceremony is getting started here at Max Zeal.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back on in inside Max Zeal Gymnasium as the Lakers are crowned SUNYAC champions for the second consecutive year. Zach Malaman alongside Brian DeMuro. Lakers played a complete game and got the victory today. Yeah, start to finish, this Lakers team came out aggressive. They forced turnovers early. They put the ball in the basket. We already talked about different players like Aki Anderson with 22 points. Cartier Bowman, the double-double. Unbelievable performance for this Lakers squad. And for Coach Jason Leone, title number six. Unbelievable achievement for him in just 11 seasons. Six Suniac titles. Yeah, he's led this team to six championships, as you mentioned, in 11 seasons. That is unbelievable. Got his team prepared for a big game against a very good Brockport team, but his team and the Lakers were able to come away with the win and get crowned their champion of the SUNYAC Conference, and now it's on to the NCAA tournament. And we're going to send it, or we're going to... One more thing on Brockport. Let's talk about the Golden Eagles. Greg Dunn has to be very happy with his team's performance today. Yeah, you can't really be upset with it. They had the lead down to six points in the second half. They fall all the way back from a double-digit deficit for most of this game. And it was a really well-fought game by their players, especially Jihadi Wallace. He had 21 points to go along with 11 rebounds. That was a key point of emphasis we mentioned in the first half for Oswego to try to stop. He still got his. He played very well. Tony Arnold came alive in the second half with 11 second-half points. And for a while there, it looked like this was going to be a really close game down the stretch before the Lakers were able to pull away late. But overall, for Coach Dunn and for this Brockport team, nothing but credit. And, um, you know, he's got to be happy with where his team ended up this season. And for these Lakers, they now advance to the NCAA tournament for the second consecutive year. A 25-2 and two overall record. Wow. Unbelievable season for them. They do have the opportunity to host some games at Magzeal. Whether it is or isn't the last games of the season at Magzeal, an unbelievable season capped off with a SUNYAC championship. Yeah, there's nothing more you can really ask for. If they have the opportunity to host games in this gym, the crowd was amazing tonight. You can only imagine what it would be like on a national level. But, yeah, for Coach Leon and for this team, they got to be happy. they got to be excited. They ended the year on a 21-game win streak. Think about that. 21 straight victories unheard of. It's unbelievable. A great season and a great performance from this Lakers, from this Lakers team. And Cartier Bowman, the SUNYAC tournament MVP as a couple of different guys got awards for the SUNYAC tournament with Jahadi Wallace and Makai Beckett from Brockport getting an award to the SUNYAC tournament team. Jeremiah Sparks as well as Devin Green getting to the SUNYAC tournament team and Cartier Bowman, a deserved SUNYAC tournament MVP. Yeah, to all those guys, very, very well deserved. They all came out and showed out, really. They all played unbelievable brands of basketball, led their teams respect, respectively. But, yeah, for Cartier Bowen, we talked about him in the pregame, how important he was to this team's success. And early on, he set the tone with his rebounds, especially offensively. Uh, Oswego led the game 11-5 to in offensive rebounds. I know he had at least three or four of those, especially early on. So for Cartier Bowman, a well-deserved tournament MVP, double-double, as we mentioned. He had 15 points to go along with 13 rebounds, and he really led this team on both ends of the floor tonight. And just one loss for the Lakers in the SUNYAC season. It came to the hands of Brockport, but... For the second consecutive season, Oswego's lost just one game in conference, just completely dominating every other team that they go up against here. Yeah, you know, it's a fun time to be a Laker fan and to be going to this university. You know, this team has put on an unbelievable brand of basketball over the past two years especially. And to be here, witnessing them win their second straight SUNYAC championship it's been unbelievable, and it's well-deserved. And shout-out to Coach Leone and the rest of these guys. And they're not finished. They're going to the NCAA tournament. As we mentioned, we'll see exactly where they fall on Monday. But you can't be anything but happy for these guys and really just proud of the way that they've come out and played basketball these past couple seasons. Jeremiah Sparks finished today's game. 14 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists. Not the star player. In this one for the Lakers, but did enough, helped his guys out. Rebounding battle, we already brought it up 42 to 34, Lakers. And that's another difference in the game, the rebounding battle. You said the winner of the rebounding battle would take this game. 
Yeah, it really just seemed like that. You know, in the past matchups with these two teams, the matchup that Oswego won, there was a one rebound differential in favor of Brockport, so it was very close. And in the game that Oswego actually did drop to Brockport early on in this season, they were out-rebounded by six rebounds. So coming into this game, we knew that both these teams match up pretty evenly as far as size goes. Uh, Brockport might even have the size advantage, you could even say. But that being said, it was still really big to get those rebounds, to control the glass, as it is in many and in every basketball game. And Jeremiah Sparks, despite not having the great performance shooting the ball, he still had nine rebounds to go along with his 14 points. And just having him out there means a ton to this Lakers squad. You know, he's been their leader all season. And he showed up in other ways as well tonight, even if his shot wasn't falling. And some of the coaches for the Lakers going to get a piece of the net. Assistant coach Bill Farden up there now. Assistant coach Ryan Rowland, assistant coach Jake Pritchard, all getting a piece of the net, and credit to them. They had game plans for the Lakers in every possible game, led, of course, by Coach Jason Leone, but credit to those assistant coaches for helping these guys out. Yeah, we don't get to see what goes on behind the scenes in practice, but these assistant coaches and even the players who might not have gotten minutes in this game or down the stretch, every single player and every single coach on the roster is super important to a team's success, as any uh, successful team will tell you. So, yeah, definitely shout out to those guys. It's awesome they get to be a part of this ceremony and this championship, and you can't help but feel good for them. So the Lakers will send Jake Pritchard up to cut the net but they have that banner for the second consecutive year Jamal Achille holding it right now the Lakers just a dominant season and heading for the NCAA tournament the last time of course they won both game both games in the round of 64 as well as the round of 32 against Hood College and Keene State, respectively. Some great programs around the NCAA, and it's going to be a, a tough tournament that they go into. Yeah, you know, winning the SUNYAC is awesome. You know, that's the where it starts, but you really are now on a national scale. They're on a national level. These teams get better. These teams get more competitive, and you're going to see matchups like the Brockports of the world. You're going to see a lot more of that type of competition for this Lakers squad. As Coach Leon up there cutting down the net. An awesome scene here for Max Zill. No, number six for him. An unbelievable achievement. And the Lakers cut down the nets for the second consecutive year inside Max Zeal. It's tough to dominate this conference. It's tough to even host the tournament games here. There's a lot of pressure on your home floor. You'd rather be on your home floor. But... A lot of pressure on the Lakers' side with all these fans here. Yeah, you have your fans, and obviously we mentioned how big of an impact fans can play in a basketball arena, but that, you're right. You know, you, you don't want to disappoint. You're the number one seed. You won all these games in a row, as we mentioned. You don't want to come out here and lose. And the Lakers, to their credit, stepped up to the plate, and they handled that pressure extremely well, despite last night being a tough game against New Paltz. Shout-out to New Paltz for giving them a little bit of trouble last night for the majority of that game until the end and to Brockport, as we mentioned. But, yeah, they definitely came out to the Lakers, and they took care of business, and they, they defended their home court, which is what you, all good teams do. All good teams defend their home court, and the Lakers were no different. As It's not over for the SUNYAC tournament at Oswego State as the men's hockey team will take on Buffalo State later tonight. Be sure to tune in for that on WTOP10. But from Max Zeal, from Brian DeMuro and all of WTOP10, I'm Zach Malamud saying so long as the Lakers win their second consecutive Sudiac, 74-63. to And as we go away from the Max Zeal Gymnasium, we welcome you back into the Al Roker studio. I'm Luke Rosenthal. Join with me is Brian Burroughs and Tommy Tallarino. And guys, to quote the six god Drake himself, those Lakers went back to back. And the number six is actually really important because this is the sixth SUNYAC title in Coach Leone's tenure. So we'll open it up with some opening thoughts. What did you guys think about the game? The Lakers played an all-around game. They did what they had to do. They turned it around from last night. The defense stuck to their guns. They found holes in the Brockport and Brockport's defense, and they did, they did what they had to do. Yeah, you know, both teams, I thought, played great. 
I thought it was going to be a very physical defensive game, and I think it showed out there on the court, especially uh, the shooting numbers. You could tell that it was a defensive matchup. It was something that we all expected with two great, outstanding SUNYAC teams. Absolutely. These were two of the Goliaths in this SUNYAC conference, and we said in the pregame show, sort of on a collision course coming into the SUNYAC championship here. But we're going to look at some of the highlights of this game right now. And guys, it was a close one throughout the entire game, Brian. Yeah, the Lakers fought just as well as the Golden Eagles. And as we wait to look at some of the highlights here, I, I got to bring a couple mentions to Aki Anderson. Played a great game, had a couple highlight real shots, including early in that first half, the step back jumper we saw at halftime. And just great all around game from her 22 points to lead the Lakers. And don't forget about Cartier Bowman either. I mean, he was tournament MVP. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And you just see here some of the veteran leadership. Jeremiah Sparks drives in, gets the easy layup to go. That is something that Swigo had going for him all night. And you see Brockport, easy dunk right there. Points in the paint. Both teams scored a lot of points in the paint. Oswego, though, heavily favored in that section. As you can see, Brockport in the second half, they kind of had their way a little bit. But the Oswego defense, they fought and clawed back. But Oswego, one of the, that was one of the few three-pointers that fell right there. They just found a way to win. They kept full throttle on that pedal and just did not give up. And they held that lead almost for the whole game. Yeah, and it was sort of a tale of two halves, if you will. There were stretches throughout that second half that Oswego didn't score, and Brockport as well. They had a three-minute segment where they didn't score either, so quite the, uh, quite the testament to both of these teams right here. But we look at the full game summary here. Oswego out shooting Brockport Golden Eagles 47% to 42%, and like you said, Tommy, points in the paint was a big factor in this one. Yeah, points in the paint, you see there Oswego Almost got it exclusively done in the paint. 48 total on the night. For three-pointers, they were three of six. That was around almost 19%. And one big thing I want to mention on this uh, stat comparison right here, the offensive number of rebounds. 11 total offensive rebounds to a total of five against Brockport. That right there is why they were able to walk away with this game, creating more possessions and getting second-chance points. Yeah, the Lakers... Out did them, uh, Golden Eagles, in second chance points, 19-4 to four in this one. The offensive boards were key to the Lakers' success in this one. Cartier Bowman played outstanding around the glass, as well as Jeremiah Sparks as well. He had nine rebounds. They Both of them, in tandem, one shot would go up, might miss. They grab a board, put it right back up. It was part of the reason the Lakers did so well in this one. Yeah, we saw in last night's game against New Paltz as well, there were segments where they kept on getting those offensive boards. So as we take a look at the entire SUNYAC tournament bracket, as we, as we just saw, Oswego came out on top over Brockport, back-to-back -back champs, 74-63. They move on to potentially an end, hosting the NCAA tournament. They'll have a bid. We'll have to see how that shapes out. But Brockport was incredible throughout the entire season as well big congrats to them for getting here into this moment but take us through this bracket brian yeah I, I, we talked about it earlier Cortland and new paltz big dominating wins in the playing round they make it to the sem make it to the semifinal round and they both play really tough but oswego brockport waiting for them had the veteran re leadership from both sides and took out their opponents. We get to this final game, Oswego wins 74-63. And we've talked about it all game, veteran leadership for Oswego. They've been here before, they were here just last year, and they were ready for Brockports and whatever they threw at them. Yeah, one thing I do want to highlight from this uh, tournament, uh, take away the playing rounds, the semifinals and the SUNYAC championship, those were all really tough games. I think that highlighted what SUNYAC basketball really is. Sure. They were all tough, defensive, hard grit games. No doubt about that. They were all close, some of them unexpectedly close at that. So as we move on, they announced the all-tournament team for this game and for the rest of the SUNYAC tournament. We have the MVP of the entire tournament, Cartier Bowman. Jeremiah Sparks got it last year, but Jeremiah Sparks is once again on the all-tournament team as well as Devin Green for the Lakers and from Brockport. They fill out the rest of the team. Makai Beckett and Jahadi Wallace fill out the rest of the all-tournament team. So what do you guys have to say just about Cartier Bowman's performance in this one? At won the MVP. Many thought he was the player of the game. Yeah, he played outstanding. 15 points in this one to go with 13 rebounds. 
And as we mentioned, the offensive glass, he was all over it. And same thing in, in last night's game. Offensive rebounds were part of his game and putting second chance shots back in the basket. Yeah, I think with Bowman, it was really when everyone else was down, he was solid. Yeah. He was the guy who stayed strong and was like, hey, I got us. Don't worry. I'll do what I need to do. And he did. And he got rewarded with MVP. Yeah, got rewarded with MVP. But this isn't it. Job's not, not finished. No. They move on to the NCAA tournament now. They made it pretty far last season, made it all the way to the Sweet 16, ended up losing to Mary Etta in the round of 16. So moving in and moving forward to this NCAA tournament, how do you think this Lakers team needs to be able to play in order to maybe surpass that Sweet 16 level that they really topped off uh, last season? For me, I got to say it's the, def the defense needs to get more solid. They had a step up in this one from last night, but there's still some weaknesses here and there that other teams are going to come face against in the NCAA tournament are going to look at the film from this and see, find the weaknesses. And they have to start kind of filling those gaps. Yeah, really, it's a couple things. Defensive attack, uh, just got to keep the defense up in this one. Another thing is I think they need to take smarter shots in the offensive end. If the threes aren't falling, don't try to force them. I think that's where you can shoot yourself out of games. And if they just create more possessions for themselves with that defense, create a little chaos, I think they have a good chance. Create a little chaos, that's what I like. But we can't go without noting that Brockport themselves created a little chaos this season. So we want to give our sincerest congratulations to them and everybody in that Brockport program for their men's basketball team. They made it this far. They were tough beat for this Lakers squad. But that's not going to do it just for us yet at WTOP 10. We got another big game coming up, fellas, and you and I are going to be on the perch. That's you guys right. are seeing a lot of us this weekend probably getting sick of us. It's going to be <laughs> those Buffalo State Bengals coming to the dev to take on the one seed Oswego State Lakers in semi final matchups that game starts at seven pregame show at 6 30 so you're not going to want to miss out on that not going to want to tune off because we got a lot of stuff coming for you it's going to be a great game but that's going to wrap it up for us here in the al roker studio i'm luke rose with all alongside brian bros tommy tallarino for producer alex brooks director uh, I can't believe, I can't remember the director's name right now. I can't remember. There's so many people back in the studio right there. I'm sorry, Mike Griswold. I apologize. But uh, from everybody here at WTOP10, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you in a little bit.